So today I'm talking, well, sort of venues and contracts, but essentially it's the journey right at the start, the inquiries and the, the conversations that you might have um, with whoever might want to have an input. I can hear various things. Whoever might want to have an input or say or got financial interest in, you know, sometimes it's about um, patriarchy or duty or um, you know, there's so many reasons why people get involved in other people's weddings, but they do. But before that happens, when you're looking, you might be looking at a venue, but even before that happens, I know I bang on about it, but really think what makes us happy what would we love and a lot of people would love an outdoor ceremony and so they start looking venues with outdoor spaces um and it will give them a certain amount of things and they start going down they do some open days they start looking and then the venue will say when have you booked your registrar and then the couple's not in the know panic and go panic and be like oh but we need to put the registrar um, and you are completely reliant on not necessarily the venue knowing their stuff but the person that happens to be showing you around knowing their stuff um, and it might just be bad luck that person just doesn't happen to know that fact at that time and it's not necessarily a true reflection on the venue so do keep asking um but just keep going and just keep looking and keep thinking, what makes me happy? What do I want? Because you probably can make it happen. It's it's knowing what to ask and knowing what you want. Because if you know what questions to ask, then you know you can get the answers that you want. Well, not necessarily, the, you know, the, hopefully you get the answer that you want. But you get the answer that you need that will enable further decisions to be made because you're aware of the choices that you have. So um, today, uh, Ros, you're watching. Hi again. Um, I saw Ros earlier today and we met originally at Strawberry Hill House in Twickenham. We were doing a tour and um, I love art history and we were going around and I, was, I just love it. I think it's a beautiful venue. And I went there to talk about weddings and venues and just promoting all the spaces that a venue has. Because I've got my background in venue management, it's... And, and hospitality and customer care, I want to be able to say yes. I want to be able to say, yes, we can. Yes, I can do that for you. Yes, we can make that happen. And I love working with venues that want to be able to say yes to the client too. So speaking with um, the venue today, I was saying, no, I know you're aware of celebrants because we've had conversations, we've had um, shared clients, and I know that you have celebrants on board. But what other rooms can you use? What other spaces in the grounds are able to have an outdoor ceremony? And most of the time, the first question with venues that are in the know is what are your numbers? Because when you know your numbers, you know what spaces you can have. And if it's your numbers and the people that are coming that's important, then you start with that. If it's actually the backdrop, and the story behind the canvas, like we've chosen. So today, um, I went to a wake of the funeral that I took at Cabbage Patch in Twickenham, because that's where he went to his book club. And the Cabbage Patch is a wicked pub. I've been going there since I was not 2018. Um, and it, it felt right. It was the right place to go and do that thing. So it's not necessarily because of the pandemic. But it's just, you know, the world's turned, people are learning more, people are, patriarchy is getting less and less, um, people are thinking outside the box a bit more, and people are feeling, because of information at their fingertips, learning more and learning what they can ask and what they can investigate and what avenues they can really go down. So find out what you love, discuss what you love, find a backdrop that just is that canvas is that canvas and then say hi it might be that they're not necessarily a wedding venue or an events venue but they say so like today um our client 
had a really affiliation with this space. They loved it. We would love to hold our ceremony, our reception, our blessing, our wake, whatever it is. We would like to hold our coming together in love, be it joy for a naming, hope for a wedding, evidence for a funeral, whatever is that, wherever you are in that love journey, find the venue that is the good backdrop for that and ask the venue, do you, can we use anywhere in particular for a ceremony space? It's not for a legally binding contract signing because they will have a designated room for that at a designated time with a designated person. You can go do that at the registry office in the week ahead. So my couples, for example, tend to get married on the Thursday morning, the week before the wedding or the week off of the wedding. Then they have Friday to hang out and get all wedding ready and do whatever they want to do. And then on Saturday, they'd have their wedding ceremony. Um, but they've done their paperwork beforehand. So it's so chilled. But it means they can have the venue that they want because it doesn't come with a red tape and a registrar and all the things that have to be in place for a legally binding contract to be signed properly. So it's a serious thing. It's a life contract till death do us part. Do you know of any lawful impediment? Why? OK, yes, no. And yes, please. You know, um, so when you're inquiry looking, don't just Google wedding venues. Start Googling ceremony spaces or um, venues like for me, I love architecture. I'm completely partial to an orangery and a glass house. Um, like I would love to do a wedding at Crystal Palace. <gasps> Anyone that wants to get married at Crystal Palace. Um, I love orangeries. I love greenhouses, all those sort of things. Because I love the architecture. I think it's just, and the engineering of the Victorians, it's just, it just blows my mind. It's amazing. Um, so I know that, you know, say I want to do a 40th wedding anniversary in a few years' time, <laughs> um, I would probably go, can we do it in a glass house somewhere, please? And start looking because that's what the backdrop I want. Joe loves gardening. We love sunshine. We don't necessarily need to get rained on, so a glass house kind of keeps us sheltered and keeps us on the outside. So that would work for us. So we start looking. The thing you have to watch out for is that the venues are up to speed on it. I've had wedding planners phone me and go, just going through the contract, and it says, when's the registrar booked? Um, we haven't booked the registrar. And I'll say, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. That's not part of the wedding. The couple are doing that the week before. Don't worry about it. It's all sorted. They're on it. Quite often, my husband and I are the witnesses for the couple so that I can see that process through. I've signed the papers with them, I've witnessed the marriage, and now I'm standing in front of everybody doing the wedding. And it's got that continuity, and it just seems to help with it for some couples. Other couples are like, oh no, it's fine, it's our mum and it's our mums. The mums are signing on both sides. And then come the day, the mums come out, oh, can we do signing again with a picture? You're like, yeah, fine. So we do a little signing. So just watch out for the contract, because if it's saying, when's the registrar, don't panic. You don't have to have an answer for that. You don't have to answer it because you're booking a wedding event. You're not booking a marriage signing, a contract. So you can say, already married, or, or, or you know, we'll be already married at the time of the wedding. Wedding is celebrant led. The ideal is that when you're doing a look around, you're doing a walk around, you're visiting venues, the venues don't just say, when have you booked the registrar? They say, are you having celebrant led? Are you having a registrar? And then it just opens up that conversation and it stops it shutting it down. And from a venue managing point of view, it means what's important to me is that we get to say yes more. Yes, you can have your wedding here. I want it in the library, is that licensed? Doesn't matter, go and sign your go and do your marriage earlier in the week and then yes you can have your wedding in the orangery oh, i really want to go and have it in the rose garden can we have it in the rose garden yes you can have your wedding in the rose garden so if there's any venue managers watching it's really i i love being able to say yes to people yes we can do that for you so just remember not to shut it down don't put people off don't just ask a closed question like when is the registration when is the registrar booked because if it's a celebrant-led wedding, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's a year before. 
doesn't matter if they do it a year later. They just want a wedding. And you're a wedding venue, you're not a marriage venue. So don't worry about the contract. Do make sure you have booked a registrar at some point. Otherwise, you're not married. You've just had a wedding. But don't let it stop you getting the backdrop of your dreams and getting the venue that you want. If they're good venue managers and they want to serve, they will find a way. And I will always find a way. So let me know. Hope you do. Lots of love. Take care for now. Bye. Thank you.